Welcome to video cast 4 of the Musiquentos Black Box series, co-sponsored by Musiquentos.com and Indwelling Language. This episode is developed and presented by me, Karen Therrington, teacher educator and language enthusiast, coming to you from North Carolina. The topic of this episode is sociocultural theory and second language acquisition, and comes from a chapter in an edited book by Bill Van Patten and Jessica Williams. The authors of this chapter are Dr. James Lantoff, Dr. Stephen Thorne, and Dr. Matthew Poner. Dr. Lantoff is the director of the Center for Language Acquisition at Pennsylvania State University. Dr. Thorne holds faculty appointments in the Department of World Languages and Literatures at Portland State University, and also with the Department of Applied Linguistics at the University of Groningen in the Netherlands. Dr. Poner is an assistant professor of education at Penn State. As a field, second language acquisition is very active and connects several fields, including the teaching of language, linguistics, human development, and psychology. It is important to understand that there are many theories about second language acquisition, and many have overlapping constructs. The editors of this book have broken down the constructs to five that have garnered the most attention and that every second language theory should be able to explain. These are knowledge and cognition, interlanguage, first language, linguistic environment, and instruction. With this in mind, the topic of this episode will focus on sociocultural theory of second language acquisition. There are many approaches to learning and mental development. This video cast is going to focus on one that began with a Russian psychologist named Lev Vygotsky. Although he died at a young age of 38, he was influential throughout his short career. There are several key elements to this theory about mental ability. It is a mediated process organized by cultural artifacts, activities, and concepts. Humans regulate their behavior. And all this takes place in cultural, linguistic, and historically formed social settings, as well as institutional ones. Sociocultural theory posits that the most important forms of human cognitive activity develop through interaction with social and material environment. Sociocultural theory is grounded in the perspective that the individual emerges from social interaction. So let's break this down. Mediation is the introduction of tools to help with a process. Lantoff provides an example of what this means. If we want to plant a tree, we could dig a hole with our hands, but most likely we'll use a shovel. If we really want to be efficient and save our backs, we could use a backhoe. The task is the same, digging a hole, but the action changes based on our choice of tool, hand, shovel, backhoe. In sociocultural theory, an important term is regulation and uses three main types object, other, or self. For example, this video cast is a type of object regulation as it uses images and animation to help with comprehension of the topic. Other regulation, then, is mediation by people, such as teachers, who provide informational feedback. When we think about language learning, other regulation can be explicit or implicit feedback on grammatical form, corrective comments on writing assignments, or guidance from an expert or teacher. Self-regulation, then, is just that, the ability of the individual to self-mediate. It's like having control over how one thinks or acts and relying less on external mediation. Self-regulation is not fixed, however. Even the most proficient language learners will encounter challenging situations and will need to reevaluate and reassess. Taking the historical perspective of how humans developed tools, Vygotsky reasoned that humans could develop mental ones. Mental processes allow us to think through situations, plan, and reassess as necessary, instead of acting instinctively. As a cultural artifact, language connects humans to each other and to themselves, and is social by nature. What links thinking with speaking is the idea of the double-function linguistic sign that points in two directions, inward and outward. Inward is the mind, and outward is the behavior. Lantoff states that the inward use of language as a symbolic tool is called private speech, which is defined as an individual's externalization of language for purpose of maintaining self-regulation. Any function in the child's cultural development appears twice, 
or on two planes. These planes are social and psychological and represent inter-psychological and intra-psychological. Inter meaning between and intra meaning within. Higher order cognitive functions such as planning or interpretive strategies begin as social ones and are later internalized to become cognitive resources for the learner. When humans internalize something, they come to rely less on external mediation. So let's talk about Zone of Proximal Development, or ZPD, another important construct in Vygotsky's sociocultural theory. In a nutshell, ZPD is what the learner is able to do on their own versus what they can do with assistance. For example, a learner might be able to greet someone and ask how they are doing because they have learned it as a functional chunk of language. But upon being asked the same question, they may just repeat the question. By themselves, they can ask appropriately but cannot respond. If the expert in the conversation mediates by helping them respond, the learner will eventually add this to his or her repertoire and that becomes what they can do on their own. Thus, ZPD is constantly shifting. What a learner can do today with mediation becomes what they can do on their own in the future. One area of interest to researchers is the idea of assisted performance. Traditional tests measure learners' attained development but provide no information about what they could achieve with mediation. If we begin to think in terms of ZPD with assessment, teachers can see both development gained and development potential. To think of ZPD is to think of development, which can occur over a period of short or long time. It is not just about performance, though. Lantoff points out that it is about where performance resides, with the learner or with someone else. When learners take on more responsibility for their performance or what they can do by themselves right now, they are said to have developed even if their performance hasn't changed a great deal. Because of this, traditional tests and classroom tasks serve only to show limited evidence of development, the knowledge the learner possesses at the given moment in time. Dynamic assessment, on the other hand, shows what learners can do with leveled mediation. Let's look at some common misperceptions about this theory. ZPD is used and abused greatly in second language acquisition understanding. Lantoff shares two common misconceptions about it. Many teachers have heard of the word scaffolding, and at first glance, this can seem similar to ZPD, as it refers to assisted performance. In actuality, scaffolding refers to the amount of assistance given, whereas ZPD refers to the quality. Mediation is about the changes in quality, not quantity. The second misconception has to do with Krashen's I plus one hypothesis. ZPD is about the nature of the dialogue between the novice and the expert, and is all about moving the learner toward self-regulation. Krashen's input hypothesis is about input and acquisition, how much the learner can comprehend the language input. With the input hypothesis, one can only know how much is beyond a learner's comprehension level after the fact. ZPD allows us to predict this in advance. What is one learner's ability with mediation now will become his or her ability individually later on. You may have heard of the distinction between procedural knowledge and declarative knowledge. The former is knowing how to do something and comes from implicit learning. Declarative knowledge is what we learn explicitly. It is a conscious learning of something. Sociocultural theory acknowledges these differences. It serves as a way of understanding classroom language learning of what students bring into the classroom environment as active learners. Sociocultural theory acknowledges the dynamic interaction between teachers, students, and tasks, and the role this interaction plays in second language acquisition. The primary construct of sociocultural theory is the use of mediation. A primary model of a tool for development is ZPD. In other words, mediation helps students create their own regulation. ZPD helps teachers understand their students' emerging abilities. This has been a presentation of the Musi Quintus Black Box videocasts, a collection of media resources intended to form an easy-to-access, easy-to-understand bridge between second language acquisition research and teacher practice in the world language classroom. For more information about the Musiquentos Black Box videocast collection of resources, 
including ways you can help keep this resource available to teachers everywhere, visit musicuentos.com slash blackbox.